Hey folks, Sam Luce here with Safari Pedals. I want to take a look at compression today, but I want to take a look at kind of the other side of the coin because in the previous video that I did about our control, I showed you all the new parameters, all the four different compression styles within the plugin, and it's great. It's really important to know about that kind of stuff. But what I didn't really show you was compression in the context of a mix, and that is unbelievably important. If we don't understand why we need to compress in the first place, then there's no point in compressing. We're just applying some processing that's not really justified. And that's what I wanna take a look at now. I wanna take a look at why we compress in the first place, the different effects that different types of compression can have. They can create thickening, they can create leveling, they can create smashiness, and there's loads of different sounds that compression can kind of create. And I want to show you in the context of a mix, what the problems are, what the issues I have with the mix currently and how I'm going to rectify them using compression. So take a listen to a quick A-B comparison here. We've got an unprocessed version and then a processed version. And to me, the processed version is just a lot thicker. It has a lot more of the kind of professional qualities that I would associate with a mix. The unprocessed just sounds a little bit thin in comparison. So check it out. I can't stop telling lies. To me, myself and I So you can hear that the overall track has just got a bit more life to it. This is not using any bus compression on like the main output. This is just on the individual kind of stems. And I want to take a look at exactly why compression is useful. So let's check it out. So you will have seen in the previous video uh, how I kind of explained what it is that these different compressors are doing. Well, let's take a look at how they're actually doing them. So let's take a look at drums first, and I'm just going to bring up this compressor. Let's just go for a before and after and just kind of discuss what exactly it is that we're looking for. Because if I take it off, the drums as they are, are okay. They need a little more punch, sustain, and kind of low end. That's really what I'm hearing with these tracks. So just take a listen to the drums as they are at the moment. Okay, and then with the compressor on. So loads more bottom end, some more sustain, some overall kind of glue. And this is using the lo-fi setting, which is a really, it can be really aggressive, but it can also be a really gluey kind of thick compressor, which is great for this kind of thing. And just turning it off and on again, you're gonna hear exactly what it is that we're actually trying to achieve here. We're trying to get that sustain of the drums. We're trying to get a little bit more bottom end and a little bit more just kind of thickness and glueiness and girth, whatever the adjective is you want to use. It's just giving it a bit more something, a bit more grit. It's just helping everything punch through a bit and adding some overall bottom end, some thickness. And that's exactly what I'm aiming to do when I'm personally compressing drums on a bus level. But from a, a non-bus level, from an individual level, I'm sometimes trying to achieve different things. So let's take a look at this snare because this is an interesting one. It's really got a decent amount of kind of smack to it without the compressor even engaged, let's bypass it. Got a decent amount of attack, but I just want to increase the sustain on it. And this is what a compressor can do on the other side of things. We can add some kind of glueiness, some overall sort of leveling, um, but we can also bring up sustain. And this is to do with the speed control. So if I've got the release on one as it is here, then it's automatically, once it's compressed after like one millisecond, it's just gonna come straight back up again. So the initial hit gets compressed down and then the sustain seemingly gets loud. Louder. And that's exactly what I'm going for here. If you just take a listen with it bypassed and then not bypassed, you're not going to hear really a massive difference to the actual transient. It's just the, the afterwards. It's just the sustain that's coming up.
and this is on the pump setting and it's only getting like what three two three db It's thickening up the overall sound by just bringing up that sustain. And for me, that's exactly what I wanted for this particular drum. The actual attack sounded quite cool. It sounded decent. It just needed that kind of lengthening bringing up. And when we take a listen to it in the mix, you're gonna hear that the drum just sounds a little bit more real. And as I take off our control on both of those drum tracks, the snare trigger track and the overall drum bus, you're gonna hear the drums just lose a bit of life when it comes off and a little bit of sustain then when i bring it back on again it just brings everything up and just glues everything together It's just helping things to tuck in slightly. And, and that was the real problem with this track. It didn't have that grit. It didn't have that glue. And the drums were just kind of a little bit let loose. And I don't think that's really healthy for a track. If just take a listen to it again, just a little bit more without the compression in. And you just hear it's just not quite leveled. It's not quite got that bottom end, that kind of grit to it. Or meditate, the truth will As soon as you bring that compressor in, it's almost like adding an extra octave on the bottom. It's almost adding just a load of low end, but it's just about that squash, about that compression. So that's why I needed to do that to the drums. I need to get that bit of extra kind of grit to it. And with the bass, it was kind of a similar thing. The pick attack was coming through a little bit too much. And this is really important because if you've not got a solid foundation for the track with the drums and the bass, then your track is not going to sound right. And to me, it just felt like the pick attack was too pronounced and the rest of it wasn't really there. It wasn't really as balanced and we were getting loads of pick attack, but not enough of the actual body. So I've gone for the smooth and this is the optical style compressor ratio of two to one. So pretty gentle. Just take a listen to it before and then after and we'll listen to it in the track as well and just see exactly what it is that's missing without it. So it's just kind of altering the tonality a little bit as well. Because it's on smooth, this is still pretty slow. Um, we've got an attack of 311 and the optical style compressor, uh, it kind of regardless of the settings, it's always going to be slow. Um, so it's dulling those transients a touch, but not, too, not as fast as like the pump would do, not as fast as like a FET would do. And it's just allowing the, the really what, what I notice about that is that it's, it's making the whole thing loads fatter and it's really bringing up the bottom end and just smoothing out the whole thing. And when we get it in the context of the mix, just take a listen to just how much fatter it sounds. So we'll take it out and listen to the entire mix. I will tell you what you want. It just adds another layer and just makes it the solid foundation a little bit more solid. So that's really what I was going for with this. Now with the guitar, I've gone for something completely different because I'm not really compressing in the traditional sense. Like it's a distorted guitar. You can see from the waveform, it's already pretty distorted as it is. It's already pretty compressed, pretty kind of thrashed. And any kind of micro compression kind of thing is not really going to work here and it's not actually necessary and um, that's what this video is all about like what is necessary what is it you want to get out of this particular instrument well with this one i happen to know that the mix bus setting it applies a slight kind of frequency shift and just brightens things up in a really subtle way so just take a listen to it on its own first and then we're going to listen to it in the mix but just so you know what to kind of listen out for i'll bypass it and you'll hear that it's got like a mid-range focus sound and then as i put on the compression it's compressing a, a touch a very small amount but it just kind of opens up and just 
blossoms out a little bit in the the higher end in kind of the high mids it just adds a nice little sheen to it and it's not like an eq it's just a gentle kind of broadening of the top end so take a listen start off with the bypass <laughs> So it's not really compressing much at all. It's like 1 dB at most, but it's just adding a little bit of a tonal shift and just adding a little bit of brightness, which is completely different to what we're doing on the other tracks, but it just felt like it needed it. It just felt like it needed kind of bringing up a little bit and just adding a little bit of presence. And we can do this to the side channels as well. We can do this on more of a kind of stereo widening effect if we bring this width up. So let's take a listen to just a section of this and just bring this width up. At those extreme levels, it just kind of gets a little bit wider. Just take a listen to it before and after. And that's great. It just adds to the whole stereo impact of it. And when you bring it into the track, if we take bypass on, like put bypass on and hear it without the compression and then hear it with the compression, you can hear how it just gets a little bit brighter and just a little bit wider. And I think that works really well in the context of this track. It just helps the guitars cut through just a touch more. Now, the vocals were an interesting one because they've already got kind of effects on them and they already sound relatively leveled. They're not completely leveled. They're not like compressed within an inch of their life. But I just wanted to do some general thickening. And that's really what this compressor is all about. This is the lo-fi compressor. And I'm not actually aiming to get like too much in terms of leveling. This is just a thickening thing. Because if you listen to them without the compression and then listen to it with, you'll hear how it's just thickened it up. Like it just gets it a bit more gluey and a, a bit thicker. I can't stop telling lies to me, myself, and I. No matter how I try to medicate or meditate, the truth will always die. A loaded gun, a setting sun. It makes it a little bit more impactful. It makes it a little bit more in your face and it just thickens the whole thing up, but it kind of does it in a really characterful way. Now, I'm not like clamping down on this crazy amount. So I'm getting what, maybe like four dB of compression. Yeah, my daddy was the same. A little bit more up to like seven, but I could have been mistaken for thinking that it was four because it doesn't sound like it's compressing it too much. You're not getting like loads and loads of artifacts. And the ratio is at 8.5 to one, which is like, pretty high but it doesn't sound slammed because we've got the speed at like over to the right hand side so the whole thing is kind of a little bit more gentle and at these kind of settings the lo-fi is going to add some real kind of glue to to the sound to me it just sounded like it wasn't thick enough in the original track it just sounded like it was a little bit thin and a little bit like pushed back it didn't feel like it was really kind of in my face and this is a aggressive kind of track so it sort of needed that but to me it wasn't really getting it it wasn't really cutting it so once i had this lo-fi it just stopped being there and started being like right there and that's exactly what i wanted to me that works beautifully so compression well it's all very well talking about compression and talking about the different styles that this certain compressor has effect compared to an opto, whatever it is. But unless we understand like exactly what it is we're trying to get out of this compressor in the first place, then it's kind of useless. There's no point in talking about it unless we know why we're doing it in the first place. And hopefully that's kind of ironed out like why I was compressing in the first place, because I felt like in the previous video, it kind of showed you what I was doing, but it didn't show you why I was doing it. We didn't really listen to it in the context of the full mix. And I think for me, 
that's the main reason that I'm compressing because if I'm listening to something in the full context of the mix, something doesn't quite sound right. The vocal isn't up front enough, it's not crunchy enough, or the drums haven't got enough sustain, the guitar's not got a lot, enough top end, and it's only when you listen in the context of a mix that those things become apparent. And something like Owl Control has got the four different compressors, all of which are capable of creating great sounds, but it's horses for courses, different compressors for different problems which are apparent in different instruments. I hope that's been useful. I'll see you again soon. Take care.